Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. Up first, uh, warnings now restricted to the Alaska Peninsula and the Eastern Aleutians. Uh, high wind warnings for these areas continue until 6 p.m. tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon on Monday there. Uh, look for those uh, 40 to 60 mile an hour winds with possible gusts still to 90 miles per hour through the uh, more exposed channeled areas. A little bit less of that here over the Fox Islands with the uh, gradient diminishing and gradually improving here, say around Unalaska Dutch Harbor before they do over the Alaska Peninsula. But again, that's out until 6 p.m. Monday afternoon or evening. Otherwise, uh, all the warnings uh, due to expire mostly by uh, 6 p.m. this evening up over the interior and uh, advisories as well. So moving on to the satellite imagery, here's the uh, system that brought uh, all the uh, snow here over Cook Inlet, uh, as much as 13 to 15 inches, for example, in Iliamna, with, uh, of course, snow all across South Central Alaska, up into the interior, and then back to the northwest there, to the uh, Kotzebue Sound Northwest Coast area, and the strongest winds occurring here, St. Lawrence Island, right through this zone here with the uh, lower clouds, kind of the streaked effect there, signifying the uh, very strong winds, 30 to 55 miles an hour, gusts above 60 occurring here from the Perbloff Southwest Coast, again, right down across the Alaska Peninsula. Not really seeing any wind increase yet there for Kodiak Island, but that'll change. Low center right back through here, tracking eastward. And uh, now we have uh, clouds spreading in across the northern southeast coast. The uh, higher clouds still pretty nice on down to the south with uh, some sunshine there around the Nat Metlakatla, Ketchikan and those areas. Not a lot going on up on the Arctic coast there, but uh, quite cold conditions on the north side of that cloud shield, uh, hanging right around minus 30 there, uh, Arctic Village or Fort Yukon into the afternoon hours. And then a break with high pressure here behind the uh, system right through here breaks in the clouds, uh, quite numerous there from Nikolsky, on back to about ADAC, and then you get into some more uh, clouds that's associated with the next system, as you can see, really building back here to the west over Russia and the western Bering Sea. And that's associated with the front, roughly in about this position here at 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon, warm front spreading more rain and fog, along with winds and another round of uh, warm temperatures surging northward. The ridge axis right through here, so less wind, of course, nicer conditions, and the uh, tight gradient between this high pressure area and the low center that's pulling off to the southeast. Uh, of course, uh, very strong winds occurring from the uh, north to northwest. And again, the high wind warnings continue out here for the Alaska Peninsula for Possible gusts of 90 miles per hour. That'll be mostly tonight and then gradually coming down tomorrow with a warning due to end at uh, 6 p.m. tomorrow. Winter storm warnings also will be ending actually by 6 p.m. this evening here over the west central interior with areas of snow still falling from roughly St. Lawrence Island. Pretty light up in that area though. And then down the southwest coast, kind of a break here showing up over the central and uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley. But uh, snow, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, right up into uh, possibly the Tanana Valley, and then it uh, abruptly cuts off, and you're mostly just cloudy onto the north with increasing clearing a little bit there as you get up toward the Eastern Brooks Range, and then the uh, southeast coast here, again, looking pretty good today. And for tonight, it doesn't really move. Once it gets into the Gulf, it kind of uh, becomes, or slows down, and almost becomes stationary, but not quite. So we've got uh, a slow drying trend going on here over uh, southern Alaska. Uh, pretty tight gradient, so we've seen some uh, gusty winds out of the north and northwest here, 
through the channel there is more of a gap wind type of situation with this pattern here, but uh, look for the winds to definitely increase Kodiak Island uh, this evening from about this point on and continuing on the Alaska Peninsula, ridging now slowly edging eastward and sort of uh, nosing into the west central interior. So winds will become quite light there and uh, clearing will be on the increase and temperatures, uh, of course, falling with the clearing skies and the lighter winds well below zero again tonight over the upper Yukon Valley and uh, variable clouds, maybe a few skiffs of snow hitting the Arctic coast there. So I like to keep temperatures a little warmer than they will be here to the south and look for the uh, winds to increase along the southeast coast and a chance of rain uh, making landfall late tonight, early tomorrow as that front slowly begins to uh, push eastward. Meanwhile, back out to the west, uh, the next system here initially sliding mostly to the northeast there with the uh, ridging sort of holding it back and kicking most of the moisture to the north. But some of that's going to be spilling eastward. Chance of light rain, fog or drizzle reaching the adak Atka area. And then looking at tomorrow, the main front swings into the area. So it'll be a steady rain with uh, fog. Wind's not all that bad. The main low center now tracking up into the Russian Far East. Strongest winds will be St. Lawrence Island westward from St. Matthew Island and lighter with that uh, ridge now weakening, but uh, keeping it pretty good there over Bristol Bay. Much lighter winds now. Again, by 6 p.m., those winds will be down under uh, warning levels there for the Alaska Peninsula. Looks like becoming light and variable for the eastern Aleutians with a few showers possible. Clear and cold over interior Alaska. Could be some areas of low clouds and fog uh, in the, uh, some of the valleys really anywhere in the valleys, and uh, mostly cloudy here, Cook Inlet, as this front sort of hangs just east of Kodiak Island. Look for some pretty good winds out of the north and northeast with a mixture of precipitation possible there, hanging right near the island there through most of the day, but uh, cutting off there for Cook Inlet. And it should be mostly dry along the north Gulf Coast, but skies will be cloudy, and uh, looks like some moisture finally working its way into the panhandle. Mixed conditions to the south. Uh, definitely snow up there to the north of those strong outflow winds through Northern Link Canal and up toward the Wrangell Mountains, but uh, not too heavy on these amounts at all. Pretty light uh, with some of that snow kind of shifting off into Canada. And for the outlook on Tuesday, that whole system slips on down to the south, so it'll improve with a few leftover showers on up to the north for the southeast coast. North Gulf Coast looking dry, some uh, clearing Prince William Sound up through the eastern interior, still temperatures well below zero in that area. Then a pretty intense storm here tracking across the southern Chukchi Sea. Snow and blowing snow sweep back into the northwest interior. Uh, Kotzebue Sound, Seward Peninsula with uh, warm front type snow. A lot less wind here out in advance of that into the Cuscom Valley possibly reaching the Alaska Range late in the afternoon. High pressure, lighter winds, a little westerly, 15 to 25 for the Perbolos, but look for some clearing to go along with that. And uh, breezy, but uh, not too bad for the Alaska Peninsula. And then you got this warm front lurking just to the south of the Aleutians. Forecast lows for tonight, uh, down into the minus 30s there over the upper Yukon Valley with uh, minus teens and 20s here down to the Copper River Basin. Also uh, minus teens into the west central interior and uh, right around 10 degrees out toward the coastline and then Nunavak Island upper 20s to St. Lawrence Island, staying above the freeze point there for the Pribilofs and uh, single numbers there around King Salmon and, and then that warms into the mid 30s for the peninsula, upper 30s over the Aleutians and then we've got uh, teens and 20s for the southeast coast. High for tomorrow, uh, below zero, Copper River Basin or near zero there but uh, northern Sitton Valley all the way up to the Arctic coast, temperatures just about everywhere will be below zero, the coldest region over the Yukon Flats. And mid-30s there for St. Lawrence Island, right around 30 for the high along the southwest coast, definitely cooler inland with teens, 40s for the Aleutians and the Perbloffs. And for Tuesday morning, still pretty cold up here over the northeast interior, Copper River, or the, well down to the Copper River basins, could start seeing some temperatures drop toward 30 below. Definitely in that 30 to 40 below range there in the Yukon Flats, uh, milder out to the Arctic coast, milder to the southwest coast, near freezing there for Kodiak, near 40 for the Aleutians, and the uh, southeast coast, 20s to mid-30s. And for the high temperatures, uh, mostly in the 30s there for the Panhandle, and uh, below zero over the eastern interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving into flying weather, uh, improving here. Now, most of the uh, 
marginal VFR and IFR now down off the coast, uh, hanging back along Kodiak Island, though, but uh, clearing out up here to the north. Patch uh, IFR up there over the uh, Cottesview Sound area, northern Seward Peninsula, generally marginal in nature tomorrow across the north slope, much of the Arctic coast, and in the next system spreading a lot of IFR in across the Aleutians, as well as uh, north central Bering Sea with a swath of VFR out in advance of that, back into the marginal stuff here for the Alaska Peninsula, up to about the Pribilofs. And then for uh, Monday afternoon, that area continues to slowly advance east. Good VFR over most of the mainland with some marginal VFR up there along the coast of the Bering Strait, breaking out to marginal uh, back toward the western Aleutians. IFR now rotating up into the uh, southeast coast here, sliding right on up toward White Pass, but staying off the coast. And then for uh, Tuesday morning, IFR pretty well entrenched across all of the panhandle there, and then back to the west, about Yakutat maybe either side there, but staying VFR, uh, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast. Could see some IFR in Cook Inlet uh, due to some low clouds, fog type conditions there, but VFR over the interior, margin along the coast, band of IFR now spreading onto the coastline, actually pushing inland a fair ways, uh, and then Tuesday afternoon that breaks up as it pushes on east toward the western Alaska range. Uh, holds together a little bit better up there to the northwest, but still uh, kind of breaking up through here. IFR now, western Ar and central Arctic coast, areas of VFR back across the northern Bering Sea. Uh, again, a little more scattered and less organized there at Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. Looks like you're back into the uh, VFR there for the uh, southeast coast. Passes, uh, Anatubic, uh, wide open tomorrow. Interior Alaska really looking pretty good. So Adigan, VFR, the uh, Alaska Range, Lake Clark, Merrill, rainy. And let's see, windy also, good VFR tomorrow. Actually, uh, Isabel VFR also, but Mentasta will, may start out marginal early on and then definitely be IFR toward afternoon as some uh, moisture tends to linger over in that area, but it'll definitely be moving out. And Tanita, though, VFR, Portage, same forecast. Chilkoot and White starting out good. But then all that moisture spreading northeastward will uh, drop the conditions down to IFR uh, probably by late afternoon, if not then, then definitely by the evening. And then for the uh, freezing levels here, a uh, big uh, surge of warm air coming northward again on those southerly winds and with the upper level high, 12,000 feet here over the western Aleutians. And then that falls back to about two to 6,000 feet as you get over toward the Pribilofs, back down to the surface here. Uh, along the coast and then riding up along the North Gulf Coast on down across the panel, 2,000 feet hanging in down there across Dixon Entrance in the northern Queen Charlotte's. For icing, uh, areas of light to isolated, very isolated, uh, moderate rime or mixed icing here for the southeast coast, uh, cutting off, just clipping in the southeast interior areas, but dry Prince William Sound, not expected over interior Alaska. And then a swath of uh, icing coming eastward here. Really not a lot of moisture with this system, so just some areas of light uh, rime icing possible for the adak atka area. It gets a little more extensive up through here, which will eventually be pushing in to the Seward Peninsula. I'm sorry, St. Lawrence Island, and then maybe later on into the Seward Peninsula. Before uh, tomorrow, jet stream, we got ridging right up into the peninsula in the Bering Strait. Uh, jet out of the northwest here, coming in on the central Arctic coast, uh, cutting across Yukon Valley. Uh, this low now slowing down a little bit here. Good northerly winds continuing aloft there. 140 knots across Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. And then uh, wrapping back around, about 90 knot jet here, coming up toward the panhandle, but then it tends to veer off and stays off the coast. And at 9,000 feet, 25 to 30 knots here, mostly off the coast, getting kind of close, otherwise inland, 5 to maybe 20 knots, 30 to 35 knot winds here, pick up considerably, 50 to 60 knots in the Kodiak Island, uh, Barren Islands there, back in toward the Aleutian Range, and then southward, a narrow ridge right up through here, and on the west side of that, you got south southwesterlies at 25, and then picking up again back 45 to 60 knots here for the western Aleutians and the southwest bearing. And 3,000 feet, much the same pattern with uh, moderate turbulence of Kodiak.
Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments and new and old and how that we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, was Tyros back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people. And it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect. but. Especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. Right. And an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other huh. and they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Well, look, Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so apparently okay. Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply uh, allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. And we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano, right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano, you know, just take it with your iPhone, yeah. you can see a volcano going off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So what's a wavelength? Well, that that's, a wavelength. The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength wow. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. <laughs> micron is a unit of length and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Uh, a human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty right? short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other okay. part of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the, the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a, at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image. At 12 microns, we're seeing a heat signature here, really. And, and the way this color enhancement works is the, the yellow and the red stuff is, is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what, you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So a 12 micron doesn't help us. Okay. Let's look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right, look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at, at 10.8. Mm -hmm. But when we take subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtract one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, 
it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image oh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job, sure. like they say. You open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want to okay. find fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways obser of the observing the weather. Satellites the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, completed Sunday afternoon. Uh, still, you can tell. I mean, it's uh, increasing, starting to close off there over the uh, off the north coast here, and a gradual increase here on the west side. Not a lot of change down the uh, west coast here from Kotzebue Sound into Norton Sound, and really with the uh, progressive weather pattern, not looking for anything in the way of any big increases in ice. Uh, at least from the Bering Strait southward, and probably a slow increase up here with the Chuck CC. Got gales out uh, for the central and north coast of the Panhandle for Monday. Those coming up is at front edges eastward there, up to 30 knots on the south coast. Seas 14 to 16 feet, 30 knot winds out of the southeast Stevens Passage. Northerlies continue here, uh, Clarence, or, uh, Stevens Passage on up into uh, northern Lincoln Hour. Gusts will hit 50 knots. And then for uh, Clarence Strait on Tuesday, southeast 30, northerly winds continue, but uh, coming down, uh, sustained 30 knots now for northern Lynn Canal, southeast 30 on the south coast, otherwise east 25 on up to the north. Cook Inlet, northeast 20, north of the Forelands, and then those pick up to 30 and up to 40 knots tomorrow for Kachemak Bay, northeast 50, storm warnings out for the Barren Islands, gradually coming down to east 40 knots on the eastern north Gulf Coast. Northeast 20, four foot seas, Prince William Sound. Looking at uh, Tuesday, light winds now north of the Forelands of Cook Inlet with 20 knotters south, becoming northwest, north northwest 20, Kachemak Bay in the Barrens, north 20 for the North Gulf Coast, a little more northeasterly here to the east, light winds for Prince William Sound. And uh, gales here, Kodiak, I or I'm sorry, for Shelikoff Strait. Uh, 55 knot northeasterlies here along the east side of Kodiak Island. So storms there with gales from Sitkanak all the way down to Cape Sarachev and uh, minimum gales on the north side of the peninsula. Looking ahead to Tuesday, west 30 knots uh, for Bristol Bay, northwest 30 blowing across the peninsula on up to uh, Sitkanak, north 25. So really coming down here on the east side of Kodiak, 20 knots for Shelikoff Strait. Uh, Fox Islands, north to northwest. 30 to 40 knots tomorrow. Again, strongest across on Alaska Island. Westerlies, 20, turn southwest, 25 for the Adak Atka area, and then gradually increase back up to minimum gales out west. Tuesday, south southeast, 25 to 30 out in those areas. Uh, lighter winds now, northeast. Adak and Atka down to 20 knots. Seas coming down seven to nine feet. And then we've got uh, small craft advisories. Again, strongest winds on Alaska Island out of the north, 30 knots. 
For the southwest coast, uh, south end of the Vec Island, north 35 knots. That's good for a gale warning. And also there for St. Lawrence Island, southeast 35, with this area somewhere in between the small craft advisories. And then we've got uh, gales there, St. Matthew Island zone, small craft advisories, 10 foot seas for the Perloffs. Tuesday's outlook, uh, westerlies, 40 knots here, blowing right across the Bering Sea into the uh, southwest coast with 45 knot winds for St. Lawrence Island, northwest 35, south of Nunavak Island, and then down under Gale Forest, just barely there for the Perloffs out of the west of 30. Up along the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, still more or less a light variable wind pattern going on there for tomorrow. Southeast 15, pick up to uh, 25 out of the east on the west side, and then fall back to 20 knots here from uh, Cape Beaufort down to Wales. And then for Tuesday, back up southeast 40 there from Wales to Cape Beaufort. 40 knot easterlies there on the west coast. Gales now for the central coast and brisk wind advisories there on over to Demarcation Point. For tonight, again, this uh, system continues to move southward to about this position, roughly uh, 3, 4 a.m. Uh, Monday morning. So a big decrease in the snowfall here. And the winds uh, coming down up through this area as a ridging uh, builds in across the northern Bering Sea and Norton Sound. But very windy conditions. High wind warning continues uh, actually until uh, 6 p.m. Monday over the Alaska Peninsula, ending sooner for the Fox Islands. And uh, rain, snow, Wind increase, again, uh, the North Gulf Coast with those gales, the storms for Kodiak Island that will continue into tomorrow. And some of this moisture finally makes its way into the southeast coast. Clear and cold up over the interior uh, for your day on Monday with uh, light winds, Bristol Bay, mostly clear skies, Alaska Peninsula dry, Arctic coast with some variable clouds, maybe a flurry or two, and a not-so-strong front coming across the Aleutians there. A little more punch up here to the north towards St. Lawrence Island. And then it takes a turn to the east here and brings... Snow, blowing snow, uh, really low conditions, visibility and ceiling wise, that'll extend down into the Cuscombe Valley. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.